So the topic, of course, uh, today was uh, digital sovereignty for Europe. Um, what I would like to go through is briefly touch upon the role of Enisa in this uh, bigger picture. The challenges, of course, that we face during now with pandemic and which we actually experienced uh, straight on. Um, looking perhaps on the um, ways how the agency um, contributes into achieving a high level of cybersecurity across the building of uh, different uh, capabilities and then uh, more zoom into the digital strategic autonomy concept. Um, I will squeeze now the first parts uh, so that we will have more time uh, on, the, on, the, on the last uh, issue. So, of course, uh, the agency has a clear vision uh, for trust in cybersecurity Europe. This is something that was given to the agency by its management board as an interpretation of its new mandate. And the mandate uh, essentially uh, describes a very clear mission. And the mission is to achieve a high common level of cybersecurity across uh, the Union. So, uh, the key word there, of course, is common. Um, so, the chain of cybersecurity is as strong as its weakest link, and we need to be aware of it. And also in the, in the context of uh, strategic autonomy, I think this is something that we need to keep in mind. Uh, um, be uh, lax, and we should make sure that the overall chain that enables Europe to act uh, strongly and independently is strong. Um, so I think that that's one thing that I would take from our mission and, and link with the subject of today. Um, of course, we have a number of strategic objectives uh, where we contribute to. I think it's uh, it's pertinent to just bring out one, uh, which are uh, linked to the topic of today, high level of trust in secure digital solutions, and of course, foresight on emerging and future cybersecurity challenges also very important so when it comes to uh, digital sovereignty and strategic autonomy. Uh, now, looking on the challenge uh, very quickly on the COVID, uh, what we see is that we um, are entering a new phase of the digital transformation, teleworking, teleconferencing, webinars, uh, all these things uh, are expanding our attack surface. And there will be a new social and economic norm uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic, even more dependent on secure and reliable cyberspace. The use of social media platforms in targeted attacks is a serious trend and which is different domains and will continue. And this is something that we have all uh, highlighted in our threat landscape that just came out uh, a week ago. And we have also seen, of course, finally targeted and precision attacks on our high value data, uh, mainly targeted uh, against uh, medical research institutions, and also massively distributed attacks with. Um, when it comes to the top uh, threats, then malware, web based attacks, and phishing are still uh, top three. And what we saw during the pandemic, of course, is a huge increase in phishing scams. Uh, in only the one month of the pandemic, uh, the increase was 667%. Now, I seem to have a problem with, uh -huh. what the agency did about it, of course, is that uh, uh, the first uh, response in any crisis is to understand uh, the situation and we contribute in, into building common situational awareness across uh, the union and across different sectors and actors. We produced eight situational reports um, uh, in, together with the CSET community and Europol, SOTU, uh, Excel Action Service and the Commission. Uh, and we have, on the basis of the open source intelligence, uh, done weekly reports since January. Uh, something which is very important is to to uh, link up uh, the different communities with the CSERT network, and especially when it comes to businesses, uh, to make sure that uh, they know where to seek the right information. We also, of course, uh, pushed very hard in order to raise awareness uh, on COVID-19. We had numerous awareness raising campaigns uh, for hospitals, businesses, uh, citizens, how to work remotely, what are the best tips in order to secure uh, your digital workplace, etc. And of course, made numerous recommendations and helped the Commission in building up the toolbox uh, for the tracing apps. Uh, there was an annex uh, which uh, relates to cybersecurity technical 
information and looks more specifically on the on the e-health and cyber security because that was the sector that was uh, under pressure during this pandemic and we continue to do so and i just take this opportunity to advertise the next uh, e-health security conference um, which will take place on 23rd of november and we should be look on incidents response uh, while in crisis um, of course, now more broadly, when we look at capabilities uh, that the agency has um, uh, contributed into, information is something that is crucial in uh, in this field. Information knowledge needs to be shared and expanded within the EU cybersecurity ecosystem, and this is something uh, that is the baseline of our activities. Uh, how do we do that? I mean, one example is that uh, we set out and promote uh, risk management methodologies. Uh, and a good example on this is, of course, the EU 5G security toolbox, which sets the foundation for an EU coordinated approach based on a risk management approach. And this is something that we will continue to use uh, also across different sectors and policy areas in the future. Uh, and then to ensure that information and knowledge is shared and expanded within and beyond, of course, the EU cybersecurity ecosystem, that is a crucial matter. And here, of course, we hope that the setting up of the competence center and network will be a useful uh, uh, tool. We've uh, worked uh, for a long time uh, in cybersecurity skills and education, and this is something that, of course, also underpins any kind of strategic autonomy. To, to be capable to have the people in place in order to be capable to, to respond and, and plan and uh, make sure that uh, you have a resilient uh, framework. So right now is, it, is October, which means that we have the European Cybersecurity Month. Uh, there's a public awareness campaign, but also, of course, we organize numerous exercises. Uh, we organize the European Cybersecurity Challenge and the International Challenge which is forthcoming next year. Uh, we're very happy to see the emergence of European Cybersecurity Skills Framework and something that Concordia has been coordinating uh, as a pilot, uh, Common Cybersecurity Skills Framework, and we hope uh, to bring added value by, by synergizing the different pilots. Um, we have the Cybersecurity Higher Education Database, and uh, they were recently in spring um, published a report on cybersecurity skills development in the EU. Uh, of course, the agency has known since the start, uh, since its foundation 15 years ago, on, uh, the on its work on cybersecurity trainings and exercises. Uh, we lead a wide range of activities, uh, helping uh, not only the operational community, but also uh, the different critical infrastructure sectors uh, to uh, use the exercises and trainings in order to build resilience. Uh, this is something, and capacities, of course, when it comes to strategic autonomy is, is crucial also in the context of national uh, capabilities. And the Network Information Security Directive here builds a very solid framework. We have uh, national cybersecurity strategies in all member states, and they actually are a living documents um, that member states use, but not, not only member states, but private sector actors use in order to raise their capabilities. Um, and ENISA helps there to, to offer a kind of a mapping of uh, national cybersecurity strategies, but also different guidelines and tools. Um, we are also invited to, uh, to participate in the, in the, in the reviews of, of the national strategies, and we contribute as much as we can uh, and as much as is requested in, in making these documents um, a good basis for capacity building. Of course, a new area which is very much connected uh, into strategic autonomy is the work on standardization and certification that the agency has now undertaken under its new mandate. Uh, of course, when it comes to standardization, this is something that the NISA has been long doing in cooperation with uh, European and international standards developing organizations. But now with the Cybersecurity Act, um, we uh, are also uh, requested to develop uh, cybersecurity certification schemes. There are actually now two schemes in pipeline, one concerning common criteria and the other is cloud. Of course, these are very specific and concrete tools uh, which can help to build Europe's digital strategic autonomy. And of course, under the new mandate, INISA also has a role uh, to work and aid member states and assist in operational cooperation. 
Uh, we can offer value in crisis situations, in cyber crisis management, uh, building common situation awareness and incident response during and after massive cyber attacks. And this is something that we do not alone, but in synergy with other union and, and, and national actors. The CSERT community is, of course, a, a pinnacle of this, but also we are now building up a structured cooperation with the CERT EU and with other EU bodies to make sure that we pool our resources and we build synergies um, in, in this area. And this is something that is very much in the, in the center of the ethos also of the joint cyber units, I hope. Uh, I did mention already the cybersecurity competence center network, but I, th I see that as a kind of a missing piece of the puzzle when it comes to uh, having all the actors in place in order to tackle uh, the issue of the strategic autonomy. Uh, and ISA is very much uh, in line and, and looks forward to, to setting up this body. Uh, we have a number of linkages which are already built and, and which will synergize our different mandates. Um, research and innovation is, is a task uh, that ISA has to undertake uh, under the Cybersecurity Act. And of course, we are happy to contribute into the work of, of the center. Now, this was an introduction, and uh, I hope that we can now move into the uh, digital strategic autonomy for Europe or the digital sovereignty discussion. The first issue, of course, is how to define it, what it is. Um, this is something that we hope that the Commission, uh, with its uh, new cybersecurity strategy and uh, the review of the Network Information Security Directive, a number of other acts, acts like the data strategy, will frame and the member states and, and the co-legislators will then uh, uh, set the, the seed. The, the way that we understand it right now is, the, is that digital strategic autonomy is uh, the ability of Europe to decide and act upon essential aspects of its longer term future in the economy, society and its institutions. Uh, the ability to source products and services that meets its needs and values without undue and undermining influence from third parties. There are different aspects uh, of this, and of course, uh, we can look at it from different levels. Uh, it can perhaps be perceived as encompassing three layers. Uh, we, we can talk about data autonomy over personal data of EU citizens, uh, the personal aspects of uh, strategic autonomy, uh, so that every European is in control of its own digital fingerprints and, and, and digital uh, assets. Uh, and this is something that the European Court of Justice in, in numerous cases now has has underpinned, uh, that the, the control over how data according to EU norms and values should be collected, processed, handled, traded, shared and protected, which is an important aspect from the cybersecurity point of view, is part uh, of uh, what we do. Uh, then, of course, when we move on, uh, the digital autonomy of data-driven European industries is, is, is a crucial aspect of it. Um, and I will bring uh, two examples, uh, one from 5G and uh, the other from uh, Internet of Things and AI, where the agency is now moving together with the Commission and the Member States in order to uh, put in place a number of measures to ensure it. And of course, finally, it's it's a more political uh, dimension, which is the digital autonomy of the EU and its member states, uh, which I will not touch uh, in my uh, short presentation today. Uh, now, when we look at the digital strategic autonomy in the research and innovation areas, I think uh, we can uh, uh, have three, uh, I would say, um, aspects uh, that we should cover. Uh, first, about the data security. The second is the communication security. And the third, of course, is trustworthy software and hardware platforms. Now, and I, I, now I, want, I, I don't want to be generic in my discussion, and, and this is the reason why I, I bring out two examples and I zoom into them. Uh, these are examples where INSA has been working together with uh, our partners, with the Commission and the Member States and the stakeholders over the recent years. And the first one, of course, is the 5G threat landscape and the 5G toolbox, um, which contains a number of elements that are 
important and which uh, enhance uh, and aim to enhance the strategic autonomy of Europe. The first, of course, is the area of protecting the data confidentiality and integrity. Uh, the 5G uh, toolbox does not exist in vacuum. It has a very clear goal of doing and achieving this. Then the second issue or area which needs to be looked at is the assurance of hardware and software through certification. This is something that has been highlighted in the toolbox and is something that the NIS Cooperation Group has been working on regarding to scope this exercise and look where we could start. And of course, finally, the issue of secure network design is paramount. The same when we look at the Internet of Things or AI secure life cycle. Um, the, the issue at the, at, the, at the center of this is how to protect the user and how to make sure that the data is secure. Um, the other layer that needs to be looked at, and of course where we need to expand our knowledge as well, is the trustworthy IoT platforms uh, and look at the supply chain integrity. Um, IoT is something which is much, much wider. Uh, it uh, touches upon uh, not only uh, uh, consumer-oriented products, but also industrial issues. And I think we are really only scratching the surface there. Uh, and finally, of course, uh, the aspect of digital secure communication is something that is uh, uh, in, in, in the center of the ecosystem, how, how IoT operates. So when we look into research topics more in particular, um, and building on the, on the threat landscape that uh, Enisa just uh, published, perhaps there are three key topics that I would like to highlight today, um, which are connected with the 5G security and which uh, we should look into when it comes to uh, pondering how uh, research and innovation can help in, in enhancing the strategic autonomy uh, of our European digital space. So the first topic is the research and development of security controls to cover the protection of the network, uh, its physical elements and data layers. Uh, we are still this is something perhaps that, uh, that the, uh, the sensor and the, and the network can help as well. Uh, then the, the standards and requirements for security controls to implement across interconnected networks with multiple owners, topologies, uh, operators, and diversified variety of devices and network layers. Um, and the third area uh, topic uh, would be uh, the key management of uh, capabilities enabling secure interoperability between nodes connecting resource limited edge and IoT devices. So, in summary, um, Enisa is contributing into uh, building European digital strategic autonomy and building cyber capabilities through its new mandates and uh, utilizing its new tasks uh, by serving as a center of. Uh, independent expertise uh, on the basis of uh, analysis and, and guidelines we produce uh, together with uh, our communities and stakeholders uh, by offering uh, added value added, value added uh, uh, via capacity building activities, uh, performance review and stakeholder outreach, flexible response to new challenges, perhaps not as flexible as Concordia in uh, switching platforms, but we uh, believe that flexible enough and by building a European community mindset in, across the activities that we do. So with this, uh, I would like to start, end my, my, my very short uh, introductory keynote. Uh, I want to thank again the organizers for giving me this opportunity and uh, to highlight this work in the area of uh, strategic autonomy. Thank you very much.